is Messi! It is the cleanest of clean finishes from the best on the planet. It's time for the biggest sports stories. Liverpool, the champions of Europe, are top of the world. The biggest interviews. That uh, such a great spectacle is ruined by such, such thuggish behaviour. And all the analysis right here. He's the one player that has the arrogance to think that he can play in any stadium in the world and any pitch in the world in front of any player in the world and take them on. Every weekday, it's my sport, it's your sport. It's CFM Sport. Let's join the team for the biggest show in the world of sport on CFM Stereo. My station, your station. It's a very good evening, Zimbabwe. Top Pitch Tuesday here on ZFM Sport and it's on ZFM Stereo, my station. Your station, it's everybody's station. The team is here. Chris Midzi, Mike Madoda, Sean Taferi Nika, our producer, and my name is Barry Manandi. What can you look forward to today? Well, on the home front, we'll discuss the plans the Premier Soccer League is making for the return of domestic football this year. And in international sports news, we have our staple, the Formula One report, which is proudly brought to you by Zimoko, where Mercedes boss Toto Wolf says the decision to only agree to a one-year contract extension with Lewis Hamilton was the result of them wanting time to finalize a longer deal. We'll have more international sports news for you when we take you around the world in 60, taking off down under where Rafael Nadal defied his gloomy injury prognosis to reach the second round of the Australian Open, while Daniil Medvedev and Andrei Rublev also cruised through. In India, this is Cricket News, James Anderson produced a stunning spell of reverse swing bowling before lunch to lead England to a memorable victory over India in the first test. And we'll touch down in the US where LeBron James, the king, had a triple double of 28 points, 14 rebounds and 12 assists as the LA Lakers earned their fifth straight victory by defeating the visiting Oklahoma City Thunder OKC 119 to 112 in overtime. It's Top Hit Tuesday, so you can look forward to a chart topper right in the middle of the show and then we'll get into the beautiful game where Robert Lewandowski scored twice as Bayern Munich progressed to the FIFA World Cup final by beating Al Ahly in Qatar. Being a Tuesday, of course, we're going to dip into France where Paris Saint-Germain midfield Marco Verratti said he's excited about the prospect of playing alongside Lionel Messi at the League and Champions. And in England, Manchester United and West Ham lock horns at Old Trafford tonight with a place in the quarterfinals of the FA Cup on offer to both teams. But our first port of call, as always, is our power play. Top here Tuesday today, here's Clean Bandit that's featuring Ian Dior. It's called Higher. We keep aiming higher and higher. The Home Front. Local sports news and analysis. From Rufaro to Barberfield, Mandava to Nyamunga, all the perfect moments in the Castle Lager Premier Soccer League come together on ZFM Sport. Don't forget to catch us online at ZFM Sport is a handle to follow. We're on all platforms, including YouTube. You can watch back editions of the show on that platform. And then, of course, we can have a discourse and find out what your opinion is as to what we are talking about. In our individual capacities, it's at Chris Midzi, at Mike Madoda, at Barry Manandi, and at Sean Tafire Nika. Right, yesterday, we gave you a snippet of the story that's doing the rounds about the return of local football. We We've termed it Restart Take Two. Now, Zimbabwe has not had any league football played for over a year now. And the Premier League is making plans for the return of domestic football. A document prepared by the Chief Executive Officer of the PSL, Kenin Debele, has detailed plans to have a round-robin competition which has a knockout phase over a period of four to five weeks. All the matches will be played behind closed draw doors. Now, the ZFM Sport team has its thoughts about this development, if true. And for me, I'm interested to hear the thoughts of Mike Madoda. Go. You know what, Barry, when taking a look at that document, uh, I was immediately drawn to uh, a couple of lines in that document which read, and I quote, all the 18 previous soccer league clubs will be required to pay the annual subscription fee in the sum of US $2,500 
each before the 28th of February 2021. Now, the question I have is why on earth would Premier Soccer League clubs be required to pay an annual affiliation for what is ostensibly a four or five week tournament? If there is no answer to that, Barry, then someone please tell me that this is a pre-season cup knockout competition to prepare teams yeah. for a full league program that's to come. And uh, if if the affiliation fee, Mike, is for this uh, short-term uh, uh, tournament, then that price is a bit high as an affiliation fee. And uh, Chris, you wonder if it's what Mike says, the affiliation fee for a full league league program, then what on earth happened to the affiliation fee that was paid by clubs last year? Because we recall that all the 18 Premier League clubs and some, I think there were two, that were given a special dispensation all paid their affiliation fees on the premise that there was going to be a league program last year. So that money, basically, Yanura, is that what they say? It, it, it looks like that's what they're saying. And it's a little bit concerning that um, some of the statements that we're seeing come out, like Mike mentioned that 2005, that statement specifically about the annual subscription fee. Is this necessarily about uh, getting the football back? Is the PSL just looking for some change here, get a little bit of football going, get some money in their pockets? What necessarily is the plan specific to football um, as a sport, specific to the PSL and the return of action? Because at the moment, it looks like it's almost feja, feja. And this is just, you know, let's get some football so we can get some money. Yes, and it looks like uh, very much, Micah, that it's get some football because if we look at it, um, if this plan was being proposed last year, let's say in October for a four to five week tournament, you could understand because also it would then serve as almost the trial period for players going across to Chan. But here we are sitting at the start of a year, the start of potentially a league program, and we're thinking about doing something that's going to last four to five weeks. Then what? Yeah, Barry, you take a look at this uh, project proposal by uh, Kennedy Ndebele. I'm sure it comes with healthy and safety protocols. Uh, I'm sure it will come with uh, extensive testing uh, of the 18 uh, Premier Soccer League clubs. And it might even come, just depending on when the vaccines arrive in Zimbabwe, uh, with the players required to be uh, vaccinated, which means that the participants themselves in the tournament are not going to be a danger to themselves or anyone who's affiliated with the tournament. They also talk about the tournament being played behind closed doors. Now, if it's be being played behind closed doors without fan involvement, then there is no reason why we shouldn't actually kick off a full league program as we have seen with the DSTV Premiership in South Africa. South Africa has got the highest infection rates on the continent yeah. of Africa. South Africa has got the highest death rate on the continent of Africa. South Africa is the only nation yeah. in Africa with a strain named after it, taking after the China virus, as Donald yeah. Trump called it. And yet <laughs> they are playing football. Yeah. Matches are being played week in, week out. Sometimes two, three matches are being played on any given week in South Africa. So there is no reason why we can't kick off a full league program in Zimbabwe. We are just bringing back football for the sake of it. And that's not a good enough reason to play football. If we're going to get football back, let's do it right. Mike talks about vaccination, Chris, and uh, here's a statement from that uh, supposed plan by Kenny Debele. It says, under the plans for resumption, the PSL wants clubs to re resubmit relevant documents for player registration before March 31st, with Zifa expected to issue a clean policy on the 2020 contracts and loan agreements, while players will be issued with licenses to participate in all football matches, and this should be accompanied by a vaccination certificate. So clearly the PSL knows something that we don't about when vaccines are arriving in the country <laughs> because clearly they think that much we should have vaccines and all the players should be vaccinated. And if the players are vaccinated, why not have a full program? Why not have a full program then becomes the question. And also I'm curious about the vaccination from this perspective. In terms of the vaccination, first of all, being purchased, making its way to Zimbabwe, um, there's no certainty in terms of that. In terms of the distribution of the vaccine, and we've seen big countries with proper, well-resourced uh, well uh health systems that are struggling with how to manage vaccinations so is the psl i don't know maybe they have a contact or something and you know 
athletes are going to be the first in line to get these vaccinations but in normal vaccination procedures the athletes are nowhere near the top of the list in terms of the people who will be able to receive this vaccination first so in terms of vaccination in order to participate i sincerely doubt uh, that's going to be a condition that they're going to um insist on i think it was a nice to have that they popped into the proposal <laughs> but in terms of it being an actual practical thing i sincerely doubt that um even the the people at the src will be able to take a look at this and say yes this is a very realistic thing that we can expect from all the clubs so i i, I look it's i think it's great that there's some sort of movement happening but in terms of action in order for players to participate bit of a long shot Yeah and uh, Crystal but they say uh, in in life generally uh, it's not uh, what you know it's who you know even to get into heaven it's about who you know uh, so maybe the PSL knows somebody who can give them a hook up on vaccines and uh, if they do then they can do that for the whole country Michael hey, you got to say that a closed door affair must have TV have they sorted that out I don't think they've sorted that out Barry and uh that worries me we haven't had uh, any of our local matches uh, televised as it were we've just had the odd match here and there through an, arra- uh, an arrangement uh, with uh, ZBC uh, which in truth has frustrate served to frustrate fans more than it has actually served uh, their need so there is a, a, a glaring need which i fear uh, the premier soccer league may not be able to meet because you're holding a tournament which will have inevitably fan interest but that fan interest is not going to be satisfied because they don't have access to the players they don't have access to the venues and they're not going to be able to watch the matches so what's the point if you're not doing it for the fans who are you doing it for even the sponsors themselves would be very reluctant to part with their hard earned cash if there isn't any sort of mileage that they're going to receive or get as a result of them sponsoring this four or five week tournament Uh, I, w- I want to uh, jump on to the issue of sponsorship, Chris, and uh, in the document it reads this, and I'm going to highlight one particular word. It says, the league will engage Delta Beverages to sponsor the competition. The package is expected to cover prize money, administration fee, and fuel costs. The league will also engage Fidelity Life Insurance uh, to cover players and technical officials for the 2021 football season. There's a lot of promises there. Will, we might, we are going to... Uh, nothing is sealed surely when you're preparing a document like this you should have at least engaged and seen the appetite of your sponsors especially your marquee sponsor who's who's uh, Delta Beverages and that's the it's it's a little bit worrying that if they're planning for a a start um around the third uh player registration before the 31st of March which means uh the the league will then re- will with the league in quotation marks will have to resume soon after that the thing is that if you don't already have things in terms of your sponsors in terms of the people who are going to fund this in terms of prize money administration costs all of that if you don't already have their ear and have them interested this is basically a talk shop and if i was to receive a proposal like this and i work at the SRC i'm looking at this and thinking is this even realistic if we haven't even spoken to these potential sponsors if we're still too engaged if they had already engaged and had some sort of feedback first of all they'd know that no major sponsor is going to go for a situation like this where there is no coverage for the mass market which is where they then um can uh basically justify their marketing dollars if a sponsor is unable to justify their marketing dollars they are not going to spend so in terms of the radio and tv that needs to be sorted out first before approaching the sponsors and then before approaching uh the officials as it were in terms of the src Chris thinks it's not realistic Mike uh, and thank goodness the unrealistic expectation of us having a bubble concept has been uh, thrown into the trash and the document actually in its preamble states that there's no longer any need for the bubble and thank goodness for that because it would be too expensive and in truth uh, is unnecessary all other countries have, have dispensed with it 
Absolutely, Barry. Uh, everyone is dispensed with it. South Africa who are well healed. And, and I'll keep using them as an example, Barry, because uh, yep. they tried out the bubble concept. Uh, they had all the resources. They had all the infrastructure. Uh, they had all the hotels. They had everything to back up the concept. But even they found it prohibitively expensive. So if they found it too much, what of Zimbabwe? We are crying out about issues around testing. Uh, the PSL right now is talking about trying to get money out of Zimbabwe trying to wangle money out of Zifa. What is the amount they're talking about? 100,000 US dollars. That's probably an amount that will be all swallowed up in one week if you're staying in a bubble. So I'm glad that they've they've just done away with that idea, Barry, and realized that they, they can actually move forward. I just wish they would be braver and actually realize yeah. that football can be played and that a plan must be made to play through the pandemic because COVID is here to stay. I like that statement, uh, Chris. Play through the pandemic. How? Um, first of all, you get a proper league going. Um, mm-hmm. I, I don't think it's particularly complicated. We've got multiple models now. I think there are only possibly a couple of countries um, right across the continent that are not playing football. So you take a look at your very close friends, Zambia. You take a look at South Africa, like Mike mentioned, Malawi. Everyone is playing football. How are they managing to do it? The blueprint already exists when it comes to testing, when it comes to ensuring um, that the officials, the players, everyone, um, there's health and safety precautions. It not, it's not necessarily complicated. We need to ensure that our football comes back and comes back with value for, first of all, um, the sponsors in order to get this thing ticking, that the players are safe and that the players are, are basically carrying on with their careers. Football that provides a value is what we are talking about. Football uh, that comes back in earnest, albeit that the conversation might be happening a few months late. But the great thing is that the conversation is happening nonetheless. We want to have a conversation with you at ZFM Sport. What are your thoughts on this proposal put forward by the Premier Soccer League? Remember, it's not the only league in uh, football in Zimbabwe. There's an entire pyramid, Division 1, Division 2, uh, the Provincial Leagues, District Football, and most of all, amateur football. What are we saying of, of those? Hopefully, Zifa will have some answers as we progress the conversation. This is ZFM Sport, our local sports news roundup is next. Hi, my name is Sean Williams, Zimbabwe cricket captain. You're listening to ZFM Sport. Z. Let's start with cricket news where Ireland's cricket tour to Zimbabwe in April has been postponed due to the present COVID-19 situation. Graham Ford's side were due to fly into Harare on the 28th of March for a three-match T20 and one-day international series. But after talks with Zimbabwe cricket, the tour has now been put back to a later date. In golf news, Zimbabwe golfer Robson Chinoy ended his outing on the Safari Tour tournament as the highest-ranked regional player after he shot the lowest score of the week. Chinoy shot a four under par 67, taking his total to four over 288. He finished tied in fifth place alongside Kenya's Jeffrey Makoka. Chinoy's ranking has earned him the right to play at the Kenya Open, having sealed qualification through the Safari Tour. And Barry, with the sort of disruption that we are seeing uh, on the golf calendar locally, it looks like uh, some of our leading pros have decided to station themselves outside of the country, and that's the only way that they can get some game time. Yeah, and as long as we don't make a concerted effort to bring back sport in terms of all the sporting codes uh, locally, that's going to happen more and more. All we're seeing now is international action. FC Platinum playing in Africa, the the cricket guys playing uh, international matches. We need to bring domestic sport back. And Chris, uh, there's a real danger that uh, a generation of athletes could actually be lost because the the ramifications go beyond just missing 12 or 24 months of action. And 24 months, 12 or 24 uh, months of action, of inaction is actually a very long time. So when it comes to athletes in terms of development, in terms of uh, the amount of playing time they get, in terms of the opportunity that exists for them at a particular age, this is going to be pretty impactful and decisions need to be made concerning athletes' careers as a whole. 
decisions certainly need to be made. Let's wrap it up with the Paralympics news where the Zimbabwe Paralympic team began their classification this afternoon amid tough competition at the Dubai Para Athletics 2021 Grand Prix, which got underway today in the United Arab Emirates. Team Zimbabwe held their first training session yesterday after completing a 24-hour quarantine pending the outcome of their COVID-19 results. All the athletes tested negative and ahead of classification, Zimbabwe chef the mission Ignatius Avambe said the athletes were in high spirits. Hi, this is Mike Madod and you can catch me and the team for all the latest breaking news out of the world of sport, local as well as international on your favorite station, my station, your station, ZFM. We are Z Team on ZFM Sport. Z. From the front of the grid to the back of the net, it's ZFM Sport. International Sports News Roundup, where the world comes out to play. From sunny Melbourne to the streets of Monaco, the deserts of Bahrain to the jungles of Brazil, get up to speed on the Formula One Report. The Formula One Report is proudly brought to you by Zimoko, the home of F1 brands Mercedes-Benz and Alfa Romeo in Zimbabwe. Zimoko, specialized service for special brands. The Formula One Report proudly brought to you by Zimoko. I was about to say Haval because today <laughs> we're talking about the Haval but it's one of the brands that is represented by Zimoko. It's specialized service for special brands. Now, the Aval H6, the SUV with a touch of brilliance. China's top-selling SUV is now in Zimbabwe and is the recipient of a number of awards in Southern Africa. The H6's allure is not difficult to grasp. It offers class-leading spaciousness and comfort in stylish upmarket design along with turbocharged power and excellent fuel economy. You know, Baz, once you said Alua, I immediately got the picture. She must be absolutely stunning. And I can guarantee absolutely. you that she is with her smooth <laughs> contours, chiseled flanks and exquisite detailing. The H6 provides a distinctive and upmarket new alternative in the fiercely contested compact SUV crossover segment. It features a two liter petrol direct injection engine with a six speed dual clutch automatic transmission. I'm glad we're describing a vehicle because I, I would find it very difficult for you to describe a woman, a human woman, as chiseled. <laughs> I don't think you Yoga, an 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 a shape. You know, chiseled. She goes <laughs> to the gym. She works out. She's looking oh proper. Goodness. She's trim. Yes. No, Chris. Don't get involved in this conversation. No loose bits hanging out, Baz. <laughs> Now, the key features of this woman, no, 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 the Haval H6 <laughs> are the blind spot monitoring, panoramic sunroof, reversing camera, 8-inch color LCD, touch display, multimedia with Bluetooth and so much more. This amazingly refined, ergonomic and safe SUV is available from Zumoko from the drive-away price of 35,000 US dollars. That's all inclusive when we talk about drive-away. Stay tuned. We'll be talking so much more. Let's get into some Formula One news and the big update is out at the Mercedes stable where their boss Toto Wolff says the decision to only agree to a one-year contract extension with world champion Lewis Hamilton was the result of them wanting time to finalize a longer deal. Mercedes ended weeks of speculation yesterday when it announced that Hamilton would be staying for another season with the Formula One team and the wrangling Chris surely is about what Hamilton is going to get from Mercedes. Yeah, that's uh, probably a very big talking point. And also, um, the length of this contract also um, pricked up some ears and prompted some discussion because this is only a one-year contract. And even though Total Wolf has come out and explained why um, the, the contract length is only a year long, it still leaves a bit of questions in terms of uh, Lewis Hamilton's future with Mercedes, his future in terms of Formula One as a whole, what is his plans with his career um, in terms of just a year contract seems a little bit strange. 
And Barry, the fact that the one-year extension uh, mirrors the one-year extension of the current Formula One rules, uh, is it by coincidence or is that just Lewis Hamilton playing a waiting game to see which of the teams is going to give him the best chance to challenge for honours? Because we know that the dynamics are changing after this coming season, 2021 will possibly be the last season in which we see Mercedes as dominant as it has been this past decade. So it could be Lewis Hamilton saying, okay, let me see how things develop over the next 12 months and then I'll be able to pick the car that will give me possibly a championship. Absolutely, Mike. I think that he's, he's hedging his bets, uh, but also uh, that's not discounting Mercedes. I think uh, Lewis Hamilton also wants to see uh, what Mercedes will do. There's no doubt and no question that Lewis Hamilton has probably been the biggest beneficiary of the turbo hybrid era. Uh, so I think he wants to see what Mercedes uh, ambition is in terms of constructing in the new rule after the rule changes are enforced after a year. So certainly hedging his bets, but um, I don't think he's discounting finishing his career with the silver, silver arrow. It will certainly be a glory story for him. And uh, the one thing that uh, Toto Wolff also moved very quickly to rubbish uh, was any talk of Hamilton demanding a driver veto in his contract to avoid being partnered with another super star driver like Max Verstappen. Uh, he also said the suggestions uh, pay talks had hit a sticking point over a potential revenue share of Mercedes incomes were totally <laughs> made up. Uh, the last point. I don't believe money is always a big factor, especially when athletes hit the twilight of their careers. The Formula One Report is proudly brought to you by Zimoko, the home of F1 brands Mercedes-Benz and Alfa Romeo in Zimbabwe. Zimoko, specialized service for special brands. How is it, guys? Elvis Nicolai Opomba Moyo, WPF. This is the bomb. All Africa Heavyweight Champion two time. Uh, you are listening to ZFM Sport. Around the world in 60 seconds. International sports news. We take off down underway. Rafael Nadal defied his gloomy injury prognosis to reach the second round of the Australian Open, while Daniel Medvedev and Andrei Rublev also cruised through. Nadal did not play in any of Spain's ATP Cup matches last week and gave a downbeat assessment of his fitness ahead of the tournament. But for the most part, he was untroubled during a 6-3-6-4-6-1 success against Serbia's dear, loosening up in particular in the third set. In India, James Anderson produced a stunning spell of reverse swing bowling before lunch to lead England to a memorable victory over India in the first test. The Joe Rootyard side completed an emphatic 227-run victory, boosting their hopes of securing a rare series win against the hosts on their own patch. And we'll touch down in the United States where LeBron James had 28 points, 14 rebounds and 12 assists as the LA Lakers earned their fifth straight victory by defeating the visitors. Oklahoma City Thunder 119 to 112 in overtime. Montrez Harrell contributed 21 points and 8 rebounds and Dennis Schroeder added 19 points, 7 rebounds and 5 assists for the Lakers who played without Anthony Davis and Alex Caruso. Hi, I'm Varios coach Zdravko Logarusic and you are listening to ZFM Sport. Sports with a difference. Z. The big leagues. The big teams, the big players, the beautiful game on ZFM Sport. The beating drum. The roaring fans. Take a ride on the wild side with the Africa Report on ZFM Sport. News out of the Club World Cup is that Robert Lewandowski scored twice as Bayern Munich progressed to the FIFA Club World Cup final by beating Al Ahli 2-0 in Qatar last night. The German champions dominated the first half and deservedly took the lead when Lewandowski slotted in. The Polish striker made sure of the win with a late header in the second half. And Mike, just watching that game, you got to say to yourself, Al Ahli can leave Qatar with their heads held high after they play, of course, their third and fourth place playoff. 
um, uh, against Palmeiras, but they certainly were not embarrassed last night. No, they were not. Uh, they were very competitive. And I remember you calling me, Barry, uh, last night and say that you were impressed uh, by Al Akli. Yes, uh, they were, of course, um, seeding the ball a lot to Bayern Munich. And even the best sides in Europe do that. Uh, Bayern Munich tends to uh, dominate possession, they tend to control games. Uh, but Al Akli were at least playing front football whenever they had it. They were attacking Bayern Munich and at times putting the European champions on the back foot. So it's a performance that would have uh, earned them respect uh, from the Bavarians. It's also a performance that would have shown the world a glimpse of what Pizzo Mosimane is able to do and what the best of African football has got to offer. And indeed, Chris, I, 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 what Mike is pointing out is exactly what was happening uh, on, uh, well, I, I streamed a feed coming from BN Sport and uh, the pundits, um, which included uh, uh, Nigel de Jong, of course, uh, former World Cup finalist with uh, the Netherlands. Uh, he was very complimentary of Al Akhli and Pizzo Mosimani and the work that is being done uh, in Egyptian football, but specifically at Al Akhli by uh, Jingles. Yeah, it's... Um you, when you take a look at Jingles coming in, um, first of all, Al Ahli were a good side. We'll, we'll, we'll say that. But in terms of him coming in, he's actually made this a better team. You take a look at their performance last night. They were competitive. Um, this is not necessarily a team that struggled throughout the match um, to only make a 2-0 uh, scoreline. This is a team that you can see is well coached, well managed, and you can see it in the way they played the best team in the world, literally at the moment, which is Bayern Munich. So it's um, kudos to Pizzo Mosimane for coming in and continuing and making this team even better. The one thing, Barry, that uh, a lot of people will appreciate is the fact that even though Bayern Munich were the more attacking side, played the more front football, but Al Akhli protected their goalkeeper. They protected their 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 their, their goal. Uh, Say for those two moments when they were uh, breached by the world class talents of Lewandowski, yeah. but they did very little uh, in terms of really having a go uh, at uh, the Al Akhli goalkeeper. I think uh, the keeper only had to make uh, four saves, or was it five saves mm. uh, in the duration? of 90 minutes and uh, that's unheard of. I mean, there are sides in the yeah. Bundesliga uh, whose keepers are being called on to make save after save after save and then on the flip side, Al Akli themselves were sweeping the other end of the pitch and they were actually making Neue uh, come into the game a bit more. I think he made three saves. He, had to, he was forced into making three saves. So just judging yeah. by the workload of the keepers, uh, Al Akli were actually in this game a lot more than people will give them uh, credit for for if they just consider the possession stats. Uh, the man they call Jingles, Pizzo Mosimani, perhaps bigger things are in line for him. Could he make the great jump over the pond from Africa into Europe? Certainly he has shown that he's well capable of doing it. All the rivalry. Here is Harry Kane for Tottenham. The stars. Oh, back here is Liverpool to in front. Talk about impudence. Talk about improvisation. Talk about Sadio Mane. And all the game changing moments. And Raheem Sterling rattles at home. And once more, City are in front in a choice. All the updates from the Premier League on ZFM Sport. Now, one of my favorite things in the world of sports at the moment is watching Leeds United play and they were in action last night, easing into the top half of the Premier League with a comfortable 2-0 victory over Crystal Palace. Jack Harrison gave Marcelo Bielsa's side the perfect start as he uh, deflected strike and gave them the lead as early as the third minute before Patrick Bamford sealed all three points early in the second half with his 100th career goal. Now, Leeds United, Barry, they will win matches, they will lose matches, they will draw matches, but the one consistent truth about them is that they are supreme entertainers. And last night was no different. 
Absolutely, no different whatsoever. And you're quite right uh, when you say that they'll win matches, they'll lose matches, but they'll always do it the Leeds way. And that's why they are so enjoyable to watch. Marcelo Bielsa wants them to be brave, wants them to attack, wants them to play football at 100 kilometers an hour, 200 kilometers an hour in some instances. And they do that, albeit that sometimes they get breached, sometimes they don't quite get the goal that they need, but they will certainly entertain. And it's something very impressive. Last night was no difference. And here they won 2 know. And Chris, uh, this is a refreshing approach uh, from uh, uh, promoted sides. We are used to promoting sides coming into the Premier League uh, and in their quest for survival, they become very defensive. Uh, they become very negative. It's all about keeping numbers at the back. It's all about team shape. It's all about defensive tactics, not Leeds United. They've decided that they're going to go toe to toe with the best side in the Premier Soccer League. And yes, they might get thumped from time to time. Manchester United, I think, put six goals past them, but they'll also have impressive performances. They were narrowly beaten 4-3 by Liverpool, and then they'll have results like last night, where they'll beat the likes of Crystal Palace and convincingly. Yeah, and convincingly, you take a look at Leeds, um, even their start to the season, they were a bit of a shock, um, I think, for people who watch the English Premier League and for English Premier League teams, because there was no one expecting that this newly promoted side was going to come in, score goals the way they did, play their way the way they did, and consistently win matches. Leeds United does not look like a promoted side when you watch them play. And I think Marcelo Bielsa has um, instilled very great belief in this team. Um, they're a team that goes after whether it's Liverpool or whether it's uh, Southampton. This is a team that goes toe-to-toe -to -toe every single time and because of that they'll consistently, they might have a patchy run of results but they've got a way and if you stick to your way you climb up the ladder as they're doing now. Well, Leeds United currently sitting 10th in the Premier League. And of course, uh, the table leaders are Manchester City. They have got 50 points, uh, five points clear of Manchester United, who are in second. But United have played a game more than Pep Guardiola's side. Who's to bet uh, against a blue moon rising in Manchester? Now, there's action tonight. It's FA Cup action. And Manchester United will take on West Ham United at Old Trafford with a place in the quarter finals on offer for both the teams. The Red Devils have beaten Watford and Liverpool to progress to the fifth round of the competition, while West Ham have overcome Stockport County and Doncaster Rovers to advance to this stage. It's set up quite nicely, uh, isn't it, Chris? These two teams uh, clashing in the FA Cup and uh, Manchester United, by virtue of playing at home, will fancy their chances. But you fancy their chances, especially because they're playing at home. Um, they've been on a decent run of form and one would hope that they carry that into this competition as well. Uh, Manchester United is known for patchy performances, uh, but they're also known for coming out with the result when they desperately need it. And this is one of those nights. And uh, West Ham, Barry, will not be pushovers, though. They've shown that uh, they can mix it with the best. I mean, they've got some really good players and some form players, not least of all Thomas Suchek. 100%. Thomas Suchek is like a freak of nature because his size, he looks like a centre-half, but he's an absolutely ball-playing midfielder and can also uh, sneak a goal. I think he's the top goal scorer at uh, West Ham in a, in, a, yeah. in a side that includes Proper Mikhail Boston. Antonio. Uh, it's, it's ridiculous. Um, and his size is also a set-piece threat. So, in truth, if David Moyes sets his, his side out to attack and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Manchester United, this could actually be a, a good night for, for West Ham. Uh, but Manchester themselves won't be pushovers. But remember, the home form of Manchester United, the theatre of dreams, has lately been a theatre of nightmares. Well, the other FA Cup tie tonight will see Burnley taking on Bournemouth. Neymar, Mbappé, Dibai, and now, Tino Kadebere. Enjoy the taste of the French football on a ZFM Sport. As usual, on a Tuesday, we take a peek into Ligue 1. The Paris Saint-Germain midfielder Marco Verratti said he's excited about the prospect of playing alongside Lionel Messi at the Ligue 1 champions. Barcelona superstar Messi is out of contract at the end of the season and the six-time Ballon d'Or winner has been heavily linked with PSG and Premier League giant Manchester City. Mike, just comparing those two potential moves, a move to France to PSG and a move to Manchester City, what's the most more realistic bet for Lionel Messi? It depends. Uh, if he wants uh, a, a nice soft landing, then he'll go to Paris. 
there are rumors that his uh, fr- his family are taking French lessons, uh, and uh, it would be uh, the logical move uh, for a player who be what turning uh, who's 33 years old now, uh, and will be turning 34 next year. So in terms of managing his body, uh, in terms of making sure that he prolongs his career, we don't know how long he wants to carry on playing. So if he wants to carry on playing and be Zlatan-esque and sort of like reach uh, 39, 40, or Buffon-esque, who's now 43 and still playing at the very top level then he'll go to Paris because in England it's going to be a lot tougher it's going to be physically taxing we've seen how the English Premier League go about things where uh, you're playing league football on a Saturday you're playing cup football on a Tuesday back in action on a Friday and then playing again on a Monday and I don't think at the age of 33 34 that's what Lionel Messi wants. So I think going to France where he knows that he's guaranteed to win the league untitled. With Man City, there are no guarantees. First of all, there are no guarantees that you will be crowned Premier Soccer League champions because they are good sides uh, in, in, in England. Make no mistake about it, Liverpool will be back. Virgil van Dijk will be back. And so there will be competition. Uh, in France, he's going to win Ligue 1. In France, it's all about working towards the Champions League. And that is the side I think that Lionel Messi ultimately will, will go to. Okay, Barry, so Mike is saying more likely PSG, but you take a look at PSG in terms of that wage bill. You've got Neymar, you've got Mbappe. You're going to add Lionel Messi to that kind of a wage bill. Someone is going to have to ship out if Lionel Messi is coming. Yeah, well. Hundred percent, and it's uh, you hit the two notes that uh, ought to ship out. It's likely uh, Neymar or Mbappe. My money is on Mbappe. I think Mbappe is going to be shifted out of uh, Paris Saint Germain. Uh, Marco Verratti's statement is the biggest hint yet that, uh, apart from of course the the, the Messi family taking French lessons, uh, but this is the biggest hint outside of that uh, uh, orbit to uh, say that Messi is going to be landing in Paris. I think he definitely is going to Paris. Mbappe will move out uh, and Neymar and uh, Messi will be reunited. I I disagree though. I disagree. Why do people think that PSG has to move either Neymar or Mbappe out? Well, what's... I I think from from a wage bill perspective, Mike. or, Or can't they afford it? Not, I, I, not. I don't think with with uh, uh, financial fair play regulation. Well, 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 why? Why? Because they're not buying Messi. You know, that's the yes. point that's lost upon everyone. Messi is coming in on a free transfer, so they they right. they're not buying him. So in terms of the wage that they give him, it's really about what they want to give him. Uh, this is sure. not them buying Messi. So the dynamic would be different if they were buying Messi and having to spend 150 million. Then you talk about financial fair play. The fact that Messi is going to be walking through the door for free means that he's going to be welcomed with open arms. And if I'm Mbappe, why on earth do I leave PSG the minute that Messi is walking into the club? That's the best chance I've got to win silverware. You put Mbappe with Messi and Neymar, the team becomes unbeatable. So I don't get this talk of, ah, oh, they have to ship someone out for Messi to come in. Why? You're not I a think, poor club. I think perhaps... I think perhaps I think it's uh, my 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 heart <laughs> that speaking of Mbappe leaving more so than logic on the basis that the biggest uh, um, suitors that we've heard of Kylian Mbappe is Liverpool Football Club in England, and so that would certainly suit me uh, with another hat on with my punditry hat put firmly to the side. So I I, I would want to see it happen, but you're you're so right. Coming on a free, uh, it, it balances the books, it it ticks all the boxes, and likely Mbappe will stay. We'll see how it works out. But of course, if we're touching on France, we need to give you an update on our Zimbabwean players out there. Tino Kadewere was in the Olympic Lyon side, which thrashed Strasbourg 3-0 at the weekend. And Marshall Monetti missed Stade de Reims 1-0 loss to Lorient due to injury this past weekend. The league on table, Lille sitting at the top, Lyon in second, Paris Saint-Germain in third, and AS Monaco in fourth. The league that makes football oh so beautiful where artistry and strokes of genius are the order of any day. Where the game is played with a smile and the little master creates his magic. All the news from the Spanish La Liga on ZFM Sport. 
Let's hop into Spain where Real Madrid will be aiming to make it back-to-back La Liga victories when they continue their 2020-2021 campaign at home to Getafe tonight. Uh, Zinedine Zidane's side will enter the match off the back of a 2-1 win at basement side Huesca on Saturday while Getafe, who have struggled for consistency this season, suffered a 3-0 loss at Sevilla. Let's hear from Zizou. No, nosotros estamos en el mismo barco aquí, ¿sabes? We're all in the same boat, and I feel supported by everyone. You may think I'm just saying that, but we have to get back to doing things well, like we did a month ago. There are some setbacks during the season. You have to accept that and go about changing the situation. We have a great team and important players who have won a lot here. Being questioned is not going to stop us from continuing to work hard. Z. Mikey, um, you take them where you can get them, victories that is, and Zizou will certainly hope that he can take a, a, a W tonight because he needs to get that consistency going. The good thing is that the running fixtures have supported him. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think uh, he's got some uh, decent matches in which he can try and get the team playing at a decent level and also get their confidence back up. But uh, in truth, uh, I think uh, just taking a look at how things are unfolding uh, in Spain. Uh, we've been here before where Real Madrid looks like they're on the up. Uh, they play well for three or four matches and then uh, again, the form drops off. Uh, they drop points uh, and the gap keeps getting larger and larger and larger, bigger and bigger uh, from Atletico Madrid. So I reckon that uh, Real Madrid and Barca really are locked in a contest for second place. Atletico Madrid, the title is theirs to throw away. Uh, Atletico Madrid are uh, certainly uh, far and away uh, the best side in La Liga this season, the most consistent side in La Liga. Uh, they're, unfortunately, they're in the same city as Real Madrid. Real Madrid will be kicking themselves and saying that uh, they, they, they need to get a run of form going, Chris. And uh, Getafe is their next assignment. You can only beat what's put in front of you. You can only beat what's put in front of you and you need to, if you, if you want um, to really see your form, to see if your form is improving, you want the test, you have to win every single match and they're playing um, at home tonight. So fingers crossed that they'll be able to do the business um, against Getafe. Over to Italy where it's Coppa Italia semi-final, second leg tie, now fierce rivals Juventus and Inter Milan resume hostilities in the Coppa Italia tonight with the host having one foot in the final after 2-1 first leg success last week. We'll talk about that match tomorrow because we're out of time on the show. We'll catch you tomorrow. May God richly bless you. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Manandi, out.